TPO Rankings. Hello and welcome to the TPO Rankings show slash podcast, Jake. How are you going this evening? Very well, Cody. Thank you. How's it going up there? Yeah, excellent. You've got the Gwellop and is that Altona Magic in the background? It is, yep. In honor of there, which we're going to get into uh, last gasp equalizing a couple of goals in yep. their uh, game this week. And my screen sort of cuts it off, but I think it's a Brisbane City jersey you've got on yeah, as well. Yeah, a bit low. Yeah, this is uh, last uh, a couple of seasons ago, I think, now, but um, still a very nice jersey. And I can see you've got Grange Thistle, is it, in the mm. uh, play QPL 2 this season? Yeah, I guess so. Did it, yeah, are they? I believe so. Yeah, I yes. think they are. <laughs> yeah, they're one of the teams. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The newly formed um, league. Does it, yeah, for those, I think we don't know what we're talking about, which often we don't. In this case, it's because it's a uh, newly formed league and still trying to get our head around it. For sure. So, Jake, tonight we'll basically just be running through the so three leagues that are on the way at the moment, as well as touching on some FFA Cup. There was some... Uh, a few games, but I'm not sure we'll actually touch on the the games that were played or not. That's up to you. Um, but there have been a number of draws around the country today and yesterday. Yes. Queensland Correct. was to, was tonight, just a couple of hours ago, and then, and then we'll finish things as always with the under 23 draft. Um, the A League players there and see how our 10 players went over the weekend or are going still now. Actually, I think the Sydney Western United game just finished. It was 2-0 last time I checked, but uh, it was right near full time. Yep, there we are, 2-0, finished Sydney. So we had a couple of players in that game too, so we'll, we'll check in there. But let's kick things off with uh, the New South Wales NPL, and we'll just touch on the results. So Sutherland and Marconi shared the points there, one all. Bit of an upset, Jake. Well, uh, maybe going off last year, it's not much of an upset, but Mount Druidtown Rangers beat up here 3-1. Did you see that coming? No chance, and and it does look, um, you know, like you mentioned, RP finished last, was it, or very low last year? Um, but listening to a few people who know the M- New South Wales NPL a little bit better than than I do, or than than we probably do, um, they expected them to completely reverse that this season and be up the top, which you know, very early, early um, days still. But that's two games without a win for RP, and yeah, definitely uh, not one that I expected. So Wollongong and Manly uh, shared the points, one all. Blacktown, 2-0 over Northbridge Bulls. Rockdale, um, two wins from two uh, by beating Sydney Olympic, 1-0, which is a great result there. And Sydney United, also two wins from two, beating the Sydney FC youth team, 5-2. So that puts Rockdale and Sydney United on top of the table. Uh, They're the only two teams who have won uh, both games. And Jake, Sydney United have lost... Uh, sorry, Sydney Olympic have lost both their uh, opening two games. Yeah, that's a little unexpected. I mean, the two finalists from um, last season, the the shortened season, are top of the table already, Rockdale and Sydney United. Mm. Um, Olympic maybe have had a, a reasonably tough start. If you look at the games they've played, they've played those two teams, Sydney United mm. and, and Rockdale. So maybe don't read too much into that one just yet, but uh, they've definitely got a bit of catch up already. Well, how's this for a bottom three, Jake? Arpia, Wollongong, and Sydney Olympic. Um, you go back maybe two years ago, those three clubs were probably, you know, top 20 clubs in, in around the country. And not saying that they aren't right now. They're just, well, they aren't right now, obviously, uh, according to the rankings, but um, they certainly have potential to, to get there eventually. Um, so this weekend we have... Uh, Manly hosting Blacktown City, Sutherland hosting Sydney United. So Sydney United looking to go three from three. Here are two of oh geez, Sydney Olympic really got a tough draw, Jake. Um, Sydney Olympic are hosting Arpia, as both of those clubs will want to get their their season on on track. Marconia hosting top of the table Rockdale, Wollongong hosting Mount Druitt, and Sydney FC hosting Northbridge Bulls. Jake, you've picked out a couple of games here to have a bit of a closer look at. Yeah, just one's probably more of interest. Um, you mentioned one of them there, uh, in particular, the Sydney Olympic Arpia, being two teams that I would have expected to be in the finals or, or near the finals um, at least at the end of the season uh, and probably still do expect that, especially from Arpia. Um, but both are winless. They're ranked 30th and 32nd at the moment. Um, so the the rankings say it'll be a very close game. Um, and being outside the top 25, they're both kind of, you know, a couple of games from the top 25 if the results go their way, so within touching distance. Um, the other one was Marconi and, and Rockdale, 
partly because Rockdale having such a good start um, after last year's premiership, just to see how they um, continue. Uh, and Marconi, I guess, um, they're ranked at the moment. Where is it? I'll, I'll pull that up. I should have had this ready, shouldn't I? 29th. So they're, again, one of those clubs that's just outside the top 25. Um, and, a, and a win like this, which would probably be a bit unexpected against uh, Rockdale being a top side, will probably will be very close to be enough to get them into the top 25 rankings. So, yeah, they're the two that I'll be looking at. Okay, on to Victoria. Melbourne Knights beat Dandy Thunder 2-1. South Melbourne drew one all with Eastern Lions. Uh, same result for Green Gully versus Hume. Uh, Port Melbourne Sharks came a uh, late couple goals there, Jake, to beat Bentley Greens 3-2. Uh, St. Auburn Saints got, pick up the three points away from home to uh, Dandy City. Oakley Heidelberg won all in a game that we previewed and Altona two all with Avondale. So looking at the table, the only team, Jake, to pick up uh, maximum points at this two games in is Melbourne Knights. Um, and there's one, two, three, four, five clubs just sitting on one point at the bottom of the table there. So still obviously early doors. Um, want to mention any games there before we look to the weekend ahead? Um, probably just the, like you mentioned, Melbourne Knights beating Dandy Thunder. Um, looking very strong Knights and probably you know, they're ranked 49th. I expect them to continue climbing from, from what I have been reading and, and listening to from those that know more than I do. Again, you know, they're one of those sides that has recruited well and looks very strong. Um, the, the Oakley Cannons and Heidelberg, two teams that are still uh, winless and you'd expect them to be right at the top. So seeing out a draw doesn't help either of them particularly. Uh, and yeah, that Altona Magic, uh, Avondale one, as I mentioned, kind of got the the jersey up there, they were 2-0 down. Avondale had two red cards and I think the two goals from Altona Magic came in the 83rd and 87th minutes, I think it was. So a bit of a crazy finish to that one. Yeah, love it. All right, so looking ahead to the weekend, Port Melbourne um, host Eastern Lions. Dandy Thunder play Bentley Greens. Oakley play South Melbourne. That'll be, that'll be a great game. Avondale play Green Gully. Altona Magic play Heidelberg, Hume City host Dandenong City and St. Auburn Saints host Melbourne Knights. Jake, you've picked two games out to discuss further. Yeah, so the Oakley Cannons South Melbourne was the first one. Um, Oakley Cannons favourites at the moment going by the rankings, but winless as I mentioned and Mm -hmm. South Melbourne sitting up in fourth with a a win and a draw. So uh, one of those ones that'll have a bit of an impact on the rankings depending on or regardless of which way it goes either south melbourne will jump up or um or oakley will continue to sit up high in the the standings in the rankings uh the second one is st Albans saints and melbourne knights and this one's mostly because melbourne knights are, are the team to watch at the moment um but the rankings still say that uh these two clubs are quite close so i don't know if form will will um agree with that so it's kind of one that i just want to see how far melbourne knights can Keep going. Excellent. All right, on to the last of the three leagues we're covering tonight, which have kicked off around the country, and that is to Queensland. So the opener Friday night, I forget what the cup was called, but they had some sort of cup name for it. Uh, Peninsula hosted Logan and smashed him out of the park, Jake 5-1. Apparently, I, I think it was 4-0 at half time to Peninsula, and it was more even than perhaps um, that, that scoreline suggested. I heard that Logan weren't too bad. They just sort of gave up some, they were bad at the back, I suppose, just some silly mistakes that costed them goals. And, and at half time, when you go down 4-0, uh, it's hard to get back into the game. So a bit of a rough start to their MPL life there, Logan Lightning, but I'm sure they'll, they'll come good um, with, in the games to come. Lions uh, beat Gold Coast Knights in what was a huge game and Lions sort of scoring right at the death there. So um, a great win there for Lions. Uh, Brisbane Strikers, the really young team, Brisbane Strikers, full of uh, youngsters and John Cosmino, the coach there, um, went down to Magpies 1-0 at home, so not not a very good start there. Morton Bay beat Redlands United 2-1. Sun, Sunny Coast Wanderers beat Capalaba 6-3. Olympic beat Gold Coast uh, United 1-0. And Brisbane Raw youth team there beat Eastern Suburbs 3-1. So good way to start. Uh, the season then, did you watch any of those, Jake? Yeah, I did watch a little bit. I was, like I mentioned, I think in last week's show, I was away for the weekend uh, and didn't get to see as much as I would have liked. But um, I did catch the highlights of all of them. Um, and probably the, the two that jumped out at me was Lions and Gold Coast Knights being two of the sides that I expect to be near the, in the finals um, or, or potentially contending for that top spot. Uh, and Lions got a very late 
winner, um, 3-2. The other one was Brisbane Strikers and Magpies. And this one was because Magpies is one of those, you know, being the only regional side, you're just never quite sure how they're going to how they're going to go. Some years they go near the final spots or, you know, not just Magpies, but some of these regional Queensland teams. Um, but other times they struggle. And I would have expected them to struggle this year after sitting out um, last year due to COVID. And yet they get the win against Strikers. And if you watch the highlights, they were all over them. I mean, the, the scoreline probably should have been five or six if they had um, finished the chances that they that they had available to them. So I think struggle, Strikers will struggle this season based on that. Um, very early, one game in, but um, I know they've had a lot of personnel changes, a lot of young guys coming mm-hmm. in. And um, yeah, form so far would suggest they're probably going to struggle. And do you know if it's two down this year, Jake? Two teams relegated? Uh Unless they've changed it, oh, unless they do change it again, at this stage it's actually three down. Oh wow! So it'll be three down and only one promoted because they're trying to even out the numbers between this and the the QPL below it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, and the league below that as well, I think. Um, yep. But anyway, okay. So this weekend, round two, Gold Coast Knights host Brisbane Strikers, and if what you're saying, Jake, we might see a massive scoreline there. Uh, Gold Coast United host Morton Bay, Redlands host Peninsula. Kapalabar at home to Lions FC. Logan at home to Eastern Suburbs. So uh, we'll see if Logan um, can sort of bounce back from their their early defeat. And Mag- Magpies, oh, Olympica got the away trip trip up to Mackay um, to play Magpies. And Brisbane Raw host Sunny Coast Wanderers. Jake, you've picked one of those games. Uh, I, and I did mention it there, the Logan versus East game. Yeah, so this one, a couple of reasons. Firstly, because they're ranked very closely. So Logan are uh, uh, 81st, I believe, and, and East 83rd, or I might have that rather wrong way, but they're both, um, in fact, I do have it ran the, the wrong way, but very close together. Um, mm. But it's it, last year, I watched Logan Lightning in the QPL a, a number of times, uh, including the grand final win that they had, and they were a dominant side and they actually looked very good. So I expected them to to be maybe a mid-table team this year in the MPL or, or at least be competitive. Um, so I've picked this game out because I think Eastern Suburbs are, are often a kind of mid-table-ish just outside the finals, or they have been for a number of years now. So I think this is the sort of team that if Logan want to compete in this league, these are the games that they need to be um, getting some points from. So I'll be watching this one with interest. For sure. Okay, on to the top 25 movement in and out. Jake, let, talk me through it. Any teams new to the top 25 this week? Yeah, just the one, uh, Peninsula, after they beat Logan Lightning 5-1, they've moved up uh, straight up into 24th and they've knocked out Bentley Greens after they went down to Port Melbourne 3-2. Um, that's the only one in and out of the 25. Probably the other thing to mention, um, not that we really kind of cover the A-League results, but for the first time in probably three or four years, Sydney FC is um, pro- getting close to being knocked out of that top spot. Um, they've, they've held it for probably I think three seasons now uh, and Melbourne city is within reach. It's one of those ones central coast is obviously winning and leading the uh, competition, but because they've had so many poor seasons, they're still ranked quite low. So playing a bit of catch up um, and Avondale still as the highest ranked MPL club followed by lines from Queensland. What's the gap there, Jake Avondale and Lions? Is it, it's a decent gap. It's, it's about what's that? Thirty points, which is probably two games worth. So hmm. it would, um, or I mean, if things went a particular way, if Avondale lose a game, they're not supposed to, uh, and Lions win a, a game by a long, uh, you know, a lot of a big margin, I guess, uh, could happen over a weekend. But it's it's probably a big enough gap that it'll take a couple of weekends um, worth of yeah. results to change that. And also, Jake Sydney just did defeat uh, West United, so that they would have picked up a few That's points right, there. Yes. So to get their season back on track in the A League, on to the FFA Cup, Jake. Um, have you got any mentions here in terms of games, or I, I don't know if you nope. want to, if you saw the draw, any interesting um, games stand out to you? I haven't got any specifics yet. Um, as you mentioned, the Queensland draw was done for the next round, which includes the MPL teams. Uh, six o'clock our time tonight, which is only two hours ago, so I haven't um, put up any graphics for that one yet. Uh, but there were definitely a few games, which once we get dates and that sort of thing, I think will be worth mentioning yeah. and looking at. Uh, there are a number of states involved in games this weekend, um, and I think there's actually a couple of games tonight, uh, which I haven't had a chance to look at, but I've seen a few notifications coming through. But this weekend, there are games in Victoria, Northern New South Wales, and the ACT. Um, 
and I know that South Australian draw you mentioned was done today as well for the first um, first round there. Hmm. So there are games pretty much, like I said, three states this weekend. I think there'll be games most weekends going forward in the FFA yeah. Cup. Oh, great. Sounds good to me. Okay, let's finish things off with the under-23 draft. So for those uninitiated, uh, Jake and I picked player for player um, that under-23 from the A-League and to put in our team, uh, we have 10 players each and basically whoever scores the most points according to the Sports Deck Fantasy A-League website uh, come the season end will win. Um, well, you just win. There's no prizes at, yet at this to be stage. determined. Yeah. If, if I'm winning towards the end, I'll, I'll come up with a prize. <laughs> Jake, you have, like so, you mentioned top of the episode, you, or maybe it was just before we hit record, you haven't updated the the scores with the game that just finished Sydney West United, but um, assuming they stayed the same, how did we go this weekend? Uh, so you've actually had a very good week, um, led by Connor Metcalf with uh, two goals, I think, wasn't it, for for him? So mm. you've ended up, again, this excludes the game tonight, although the only players playing in, in the game that I have to update are my players. So you okay. finished with 77 fantasy points. Uh, I'm on 40 with um, the updates, although Joel King is one of my players for Sydney and he's just got a clean sheet, so I'll get a decent little chunk oh, nice. there. So. Yep. So you've won the week, um, and before those last few players get their points, the total score for the season to date is 548 for me, 542 for you. Ooh, so you, the, close the last in. couple of yeah, you've definitely the last couple of rounds you've caught up a bit, um, and I'd say that all said and done, once I update it for tonight's game, um, I'll probably be about 15, 20 points in yep. front. I'd say. Also had uh, Louis Dorigo, Jake, 18 points, scored a goal from midfield there. You did. Um, and then the other high scorers, uh, you had Kolakowski. Kolakowski, is that mm. how we pronounce that? Something like that, um, yep. Yeah, with 10 points. Uh, and then I ended up with, like I mentioned, Joel King, who will get a decent score because he's had two games. Sydney had two games this mm. uh, fantasy game round uh, and the clean sheet tonight. So that's 11 rounds in now, Jake. And I think there's only 26 rounds in, in the fantasy A-League. So... Um, we're Sounds closing right, in yeah. on, on halfway, uh, and at least we're it's nice and tight at the at the moment. So it's been a bit of fun. Um, yeah, that's probably the episode, probably the show. Unless you've got anything else to add there, Jake. Um, only that uh, in terms of the MPLs from the other states, I have seen a few draws now um, coming out. So in terms of timing, no new ones starting this weekend coming, but the weekend after that, which is the 20th of March, that weekend, uh, yep. we'll have Western Australia and Tasmania kicking off. Um, the following weekend, North New South Wales, and then a couple weekends after that, we'll have South Australia and ACT, which is the 9th of April. Uh, and from that point, it's all systems go. Awesome. All right. Well, that'll do for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for watching slash listening, and we'll see you back here next week. See you, Jake. See you. See you later.